What is going on guys, it is your boy Gary J Gaming here, and today we are looking at the Challenger 1 Mark III, a royal upgrade. So let's just jump right into the dev blog. The Challenger Mark III is an upgraded modification of the well-known British Challenger MBT, introducing most notably additional reactive armor elements to bolster the vehicle's protection against heat rounds. Beat the new and improved Challenger MBT coming to War Thunder as part of the upcoming update 1.85. Briefly, an upgraded modification of the Challenger MBT with add-on ERA elements that boost the vehicle's performance. Several updates ago, we introduced the mighty Challenger Mark II MBT to the top rank of the British Ground Forces tree. I wouldn't use that word. Giving British tankers their own high-performance MBT. Wouldn't use that word either. <laughs> As counter to the other nations' vehicles with similar performance. In the upcoming update 1.85, we are pleased to present a new modification of the revered Challenger Mark II, sporting additional ERA and composite armor packs that increase the vehicle's protection. Yay. Overall performance of the new Challenger Mark III doesn't change compared to the existing Mark II already available in War Thunder. The vehicle uses the same engine, suspension, gun, ammunition, and armor layout. However, what does separate the Mark III from the Mark II is the addition of add-on ERA and composite armor elements from the front and sides of the vehicle's hull. The add-on ERA packs cover the vehicle's lower front glacis plate, thus greatly increasing protection against heat rounds, so no more heating through the tow plate, as they say in Britain. Uh, the vehicle's simple metal side sheet skirts were also replaced with composite armor screens on the front and rear portions of the hull sides, whereas ERA blocks cover the center, offering increased protection for the fighting compartment against heat rounds. Additionally, all ammunition is now stowed in armor bins on the Challenger Mark III, just decreasing the chance of penetrating shot, igniting the stowed rounds. Overall, the Challenger Mark III offers improved protection against enemy fire and greatly increases survivability compared to the familiar Mark II model. We're sure that a seasoned Challenger driver will make excellent use of this additional tank to their top tier lineup. Be sure to try out the new Challenger Mark III uh, coming to the top rank of British Ground Forces tree in the upcoming War Thunder Update 1.85. In the meantime, stay tuned to, sin to the news to see what else Happens in update 1.85, has in store for you. Until then, happy hunting tankers. I'm going to be brief on this one. Um, look, the tank looks fantastic. The Challenger, the Chieftain, they've always looked fantastic. Um, with the thermal sleeves over everything, the stowage racks on the side and all that. Um, and here we've got a picture of the actual armor layout. The problem is, the Challenger... It doesn't change what's fundamentally wrong with the Challenger. Um, and that's not the way it's modelled. Gaijin have actually... They were spot on with the Challenger Mark II. People hate that. They hate it. But the Challenger is probably one of the most accurately modelled top tier vehicles in the game. Because inherently people don't understand the different effects that different penetrators have on the armor so this thing has composite armor that was designed to stop soviet um depleted uranium and tungsten penetrators because they weren't monoblock penetrators they were composite i don't want to get into the specifics of tank rounds here but essentially nato tank ammunition and soviet tank ammunition is different so one is able to you know, one was designed to penetrate Soviet tanks, one was designed to penetrate NATO tanks. Take a guess which one was meant to do which. However, when you look at War Thunder, NATO tanks fight other NATO tanks sometimes. Look at the Leopard 2A4. It's pretty much always paired up with the, with the um, Soviets. So, um, the vehicle doesn't fit the matter of War Thunder. It just doesn't. This addition, this sort of new vehicle coming in, the ERA will be good to help it against ATGMs. Fair. Isn't going to help the fact that, you know, APFSDS, um, pretty much pretty much the turret is immune to APFSDS uh, from certain tanks, especially Soviet ones. Some other APFSDS rounds go through. The hull is essentially... <sighs> yeah, I'm so tired. Uh, the hull is essentially just a just a kill zone with uh, those types of ammunition. So you've added weight to an already sluggish vehicle. That's not going to help it. Uh, secondly, um, I understand the reason they didn't put this as a modification to the Mark II. Uh, Britain needs more high tier vehicles, so it, it's a good idea to have this thing as a separate vehicle rather than just buying backups for the Mark II. However. This is where the problem lies. The Mark III 
is going to start off with APDS ammunition. At least, if it shares all the same ammunition and gun, it will start off with APDS ammunition. How can you willingly go to battle using a tank at that tier where everyone else can fire? Like, when I first got the Abrams, that thing fires fucking APFSDS stock. You know, it might only be 360 millimeters of penetration, but it ain't APDS. I was happy with that, you know. APDS is is a garbage round for, for high tier because it's not a it just doesn't normalize at the composite everything sloped it's, it's just a stupid shell um you need to look at it from a different perspective that the tank is just not going to be combat effective and you know there are much better players than me who will have comments on this so i'll say no more it's been your boy garage gaming the tank looks good that's that's pretty much all it's gonna do catch you next time